I want to go now more slowly over these verses um, and discuss some of the key words there because we'll find them over and over again in the Psalms. Okay? Um, as we said, it starts off um, uh, Shigayon. It's um, nobody's willing to translate it. I don't know whether they don't either. Okay. Maybe. I don't think he translates it either. Uh, no. Anyway, uh, by David, which he sang to Adonai um, on the occasion of these words of the Cushite, uh, Cush, rather, uh, a Benjamite, not the Cushite, but Cush. Uh, so on that occasion, uh, which is the occasion of this whole uh, thing, you see, um, because the, uh, the Cushite is the one who brought the news. Um, all right. O Lord, my God, Adonai, uh, Eloi, Uka Hasiti, I take refuge in you. What does that mean? To take refuge in God. It's a powerful expression. Uh, you know, they, he translates it that way too. Take refuge, you see. Adonai, Uka Hasiti. Hoshieni Mikol Udfai. You see, save me from all my pursuers and deliver me. The church sings that. Christ in the heart of the church sings that. Because the church, insofar as it bears truth and the truth of Christ, is always hated. As it is right now. And so, you know, even in our own culture, we keep saying, no, abortion is murder. There are no exceptions. You know, if a doctor has to operate and uh, to heal the woman, and an unintended effect is that the child dies, that's one thing. But when a doctor goes into the womb of a woman to get that uh, child and kill it, that's something else. And so, you see, uh, I take refuge in you, you see. Uh, save me from all my pursuers and deliver me. Lest, like a lion, they rend me, dragging me away with none to rescue. They'll come after me and they'll kill me. Why? Because I am opposed to their evil. And uh, the only way you get rid of somebody like that is to kill them. If they're already killing babies, they don't mind killing a few adults to protect it. Uh, Lord my God, if I have done this, uh, it doesn't say what this is. Um, but if I have done this, if there's wrong in my hands, if I have be betrayed, or repaid rather, my friend with evil, you see, uh, if I have paid back my my friend, my the, the, it's what's said here is it's the word for peace, the one with whom I am at peace, you see, uh, or plundered my enemy without cause, son. Huh? Uh, then let this happen to me. Let the enemy pursue uh, my soul, my life, and uh, let him trample my life to the ground. You see? Uh, 
and lay my soul in the desert. Lord, if I've done these things they say I've done, then let them kill me. But you know I haven't done them. So this is this prayer of a persecuted man. Jesus knows this psalm. Jesus knows what it's all about. And so, because he did evil to no one, and yet his enemies are pursuing him to kill him. And this is one of the passion psalms in that sense. When you know this, you read the soul of Christ. See? Now, starting with verse uh, 6. You see? Um, the enemy is pursuing my soul and so forth. You see? Uh, and uh, then starting with verse 7, which is different than my English text. Kuma Adonai Afrika, rise up, O Lord, in your anger. Um, lift yourself up against the fury of my enemies, son. Uh, so did I. And um, let the assembly of the peoples be gathered. See, this is the high eye. And my glory, my kavod, be put in the dust. Uh, you know, Lord, I haven't done this. Now, the Lord could pray that, but he would never pray for vengeance. He prays for conversion. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And so it goes on then. Kuma Adonai, rise up, O Lord, in your anger, as we just read, um, and so forth. And uh, let the assemblies of the people uh, be gathered together uh, about you. And over that assembly, take your seat on high. Um, and then it begins, Who is the Lord? Adonai Yadin Anin. The Lord judges the peoples. You see? So, Shofteini, judge me, O Adonai, in your justice. You see? Uh, and according to the integrity that is in me. Now, would anybody really pray that? Yes. But it's not that uh, if there's any integrity in me, it's by your grace, it's not me. But you know, Lord, I haven't done what they're after me for. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. And as I meant to point out, I don't think I did. Um, this psalm is what we have Monday week one, the daytime prayer. It's this meditation on the passion of the Lord. Huh? Uh, oh, let the evil of the wicked come to an end, but establish the righteous you who try the minds and hearts, O righteous God. And now he's praying, come and judge between me and my enemies. Our Lord really said more than that. He said, just don't lay this to their charge. You know, forgive them. They don't really know. If they knew they were killing God, they might be a little more uh, sober. Uh, so, uh, then, um, God is a righteous judge. And then it moves on. Um, this is a, this is a psalm, uh, praying, as the first line says, you see, 
when he gets news that his son was killed. Now that's not when the, the real occasion of the psalm we don't know, but the editors linked it with the life of David. Um, and then the text goes on. Um, if im lo yashub, if a man does not repent, God will wet his sword and uh, uh, prepare his bow. And then it goes on then from there. He has prepared deadly weapons, making his arrows fiery shafts. Behold, the wicked man conceives evil and is pregnant with mischief and brings forth lies. Remember that image. It was earlier in the same uh, psalm. He makes a pit, digging it out, then covering it over, you see, with dirt and branches, so that his enemy will walk there and just fall. Look what he says. Uh, And falls into the hole himself, which he has made. His mischief returns upon his own head, and on his own skull his violence descends. And finally then, the ending of the psalm. Uh, I will uh, render to the Lord uh, righteousness or thanksgiving according to his righteousness. And I will sing uh, to the name of the Lord Most High. And that's the uh, the psalm. Uh, A man who's saying, I am being persecuted unjustly by my enemy. And I need your help. And when you do that for me, Lord, uh, I will always remember you and I will tell the world what you've done for me. Now, when we take that song and try to apply apply it to the Lord's heart, and therefore, it's the way our heart should be when we pray this song, we are not praying that our enemies come to harm. We are praying that they come to Christ. And uh, that's what we're praying in imitation of Jesus. But this psalm opens up for us, you see, the depth of that prayer and the depth of the suffering. Suppose this man, even this psalmist, had decided to take vengeance on his enemy who had persecuted him unjustly. Well, he can defend himself, as they say in canon law and in moral theology. Con moderamini in culpate tutele. According to the uh, non-culpability protection of myself. Uh, But Jesus says more, see. He prays for them. And so, this is a psalm opening up for us Life. Life. How much of this can we identify with as the psalm of the just man? Are we sadiq? And can we go and pray it the way Jesus prayed it? So that anyone who's done us harm is blessed. Bless them and be with them, Lord. Amen.